A patient had to undergo enucleation of the eyeball and its contents due to trauma. Following the surgery, the volume of the socket appears shrunken and the patient is seeking prosthetic treatment. What type of ocular prosthesis is best suited for this case? So now I remember when this question was asked in one of the NEET exams a couple of years ago, it had caused quite a stir because everyone was just talking about this, that this was a very difficult question. And surprisingly that year, a lot of maxillofacial questions were asked. So do not neglect such questions. Just go through the explanation and listen to the video. I'm sure it will help. Now the options here are buried, buried semi-integrated, semi-buried and integrated and hydroxyapatite implant. So all first three options are okay. Then we start thinking what is the hydroxyapatite implant. Although we don't know the other options also quite as much yet. So let's have a diagrammatic understanding of the different classification of implants used for anophthalmia. And ophthalmia is a missing eye. Okay, so with these maxillofacial prostheses, you can put a prosthesis. It will not be visually helping the patient, but it is for an aesthetic concern. So a buried spherical implant, this is the implant over here, the buried spherical, this is the sphere, right? It is an implant which is smooth between the smooth opposition between the ocular prosthesis and the remaining part of the contents of the socket. And it is used when there is enough space okay so if the socket is not shrunken then you will use this part so uh, buried is the basic form of using an implant a buried integrated implant is the one that has no uh, interruption of the conjunctival lining there is no interruption anywhere especially the anterior part is different so the anterior surface of the implant is irregular to provide a better translation of implant movement to the prosthesis. So you see the anterior, this is the prosthesis. This is the implant. So because of that rugged part in the anterior portion, there is a better movement of the prosthesis, which is even better in the exposed integrated implant. Okay. So exposed integrated implant allows direct coupling of the implant with a peg. There is a peg used over here and it improves the motility of the prosthesis. Now let's have a look at the options. Okay, buried is an option. We saw buried. Then second type we saw was buried and integrated. I will just write it over here. We saw buried, buried and integrated. And we saw exposed and integrated. So it can be either buried or exposed. It can be integrated or non-integrated, but we do not have the non-integrated design in exposed. We have the buried, integrated and non-integrated. Now what is a non-integrated implant? So they are banked non-integrated implants. This is only ocular implant. Okay. Do not confuse this with your endosseous implants and dental prosthesis. So a buried non-integrated implant is wrapped in the tissues. So you have banked sclera and then this is attached to the rectus muscle. They will give you good volume and plus good cosmetic appearance. So these are also into popular uh, use buried integrated implants on the other hand need to be sutured to rectus muscle. Now in the given case, you will use an integrated implant that is semi buried. Okay. That is exposed here, uh, exposed integrated, the type three semi buried means exposed and integrated. So this type of implant is going to give you the best motility and the best uh, volume replenishment because it provides the bulk using the implant and the motility using the peg. So the correct answer in this question would be option three, semi-buried integrated. Buried and semi-integrated is not there. There is no semi-integrated. It, it is either integrated or non-integrated. And just the buried implant will not uh, rehabilitate the sunken socket completely. Therefore, this is not correct. Now coming to hydroxyapatite implant option four, the implants 
in this scenario in anophthalmia can be made of various materials so you have hydroxy appetite as one and then you have a uh, porous polyethylene ethyl polyethylene okay so these are the material uh, options in terms of using ophthalmic uh, implants you can also have teflon or ptfe so these are some materials which have the same configuration so material wise it's not going to make much of a difference in what you are going to uh, rehabilitate so these are not relevant in terms of the choice of the design the design is more important and that is why we are going to pick option number three